Hey guys, hope you are all having a great day so far. Something big happened yesterday. After years of coverage and updates, Evergrande has been ordered to liquidate. The sad tale of Evergrande seems to be closing, but the ramifications of this are set to stay long after its demise as I will explain in this video, and no, this is not the end of China's worst chapter in its current economic downfall spiral. As usual, please smash that like button, help the channel out and join the Discord. We have seen solid growth over the past couple of weeks and more and more people are coming in. If interested in day trading alerts or long-term educational material for investments, there is no better place than my Discord, so come in and join us. Taken directly from the Associated Press, a Hong Kong court's order to liquidate China Evergrande, the world's most heavily indebted real estate developer, is only a tentative step toward resolving a debt crisis that is haunting financial markets and dragging on the Chinese economy. The decision sets the stage for what is expected to be a drawn-out and complicated process with potential political considerations as investors watch whether the Chinese courts will recognize Hong Kong's ruling, given the many authorities involved. Offshore investors will be focused on how Chinese authorities treat foreign creditors when a company fails. Evergrande, which has $240 billion of assets, sent a struggling property sector into a tailspin and dealt a blow to the economy when it defaulted on its debt in 2021. The liquidation ruling creates further uncertainty for China's already fragile capital and property markets. Evergrande owes $340 billion to its creditors. Experts say it's unclear if Monday's order will be enforced in mainland China, where the company and 90% of its assets are based. The order by the Hong Kong High Court also is not a remedy for the crisis of confidence haunting China's financial markets. According to Brock Silvers, the managing director of Kaiyuan Capital, the liquidators acting on behalf of the creditors in the Hong Kong case will have a relatively straightforward path to trying to claim offshore assets, but the company has very few offshore assets. Almost everything is onshore, and onshore the liquidator's authority simply isn't recognized. Officials have made it clear their priority is to satisfy claims on prepaid housing that developers haven't delivered, and even after that would be the onshore creditors. So once you get to that stage, there's nothing left that would flow to the offshore creditors. Ripple effects from the property crisis, coupled with lingering damage from the coronavirus pandemic, have plagued China's economic recovery and are expected to take growth below 5% this year. While Evergrande's cash crunch represented a big chunk of the liabilities developers defaulted on, China's financial woes are not confined to the property sector. Many Chinese financial institutions and local governments also are in a pickle. Overall, Outstanding property debt was estimated at 60 trillion yuan, or 8.9 trillion American dollars, which is nearly 50% of China's GDP in 2022. Evergrande applied for another adjournment on Monday as its lawyer said it had made some progress on the restructuring proposal. As part of the latest offer, the developer proposed creditors swap their debts into all the shares the company holds in its two Hong Kong units, compared to stakes of about 30% in the subsidiaries ahead of the last hearing in December. So where does all of this leave us? As much as the dramatic headlines that Evergrande is over might appear to cast an end to this saga, the pains of this will not end all at once, and are likely to continue spreading. While tensions with the US and aging demographics grab headlines, China's real estate crisis is the elephant in the room. The sector's woes, deeply intertwined with the broader economy, necessitate more forceful policy interventions to avert a wider economic slump. Consumers and local governments hang in the balance, demanding urgent action to stabilize the crucial real estate market. In 2021, as you guys know by now, the colossal Chinese developer Evergrande became the first domino to fall in a real estate crisis that continues to grip the nation. Once China's sales leader, Evergrande embodied the debt-fueled excesses in the sector that President Xi Jinping vows to curb. Developers like Evergrande borrowed heavily to build towering apartment blocks on land acquired from local governments, who relied on such sales to fund their own saddled with a staggering $300 billion in debt, Evergrande defaulted on its payments over two years ago and remains entangled in restructuring negotiations. Since then, more than 50 developers have followed suit. For years, China's real estate market was a powerful engine, contributing up to a quarter of the country's annual output. Now, it's a major drag on growth. China's 2023 GDP expansion of 5.2% is one of its weakest in decades, excluding the pandemic years. Real estate investment plunged 9.6% last year, pulling overall private investment into negative territory. The real estate crunch isn't just about growth numbers. 
It's impacting households as falling prices and sales erode wealth and dampen consumer spending. Local governments are also feeling the pinch, with their land sale revenue drying up and hindering their ability to fund crucial infrastructure projects. Aware of the dangers of reigniting a bubble, policymakers have opted for a cautious approach. They've loosened home buying restrictions in select cities, cut interest rates, and ensured banks have ample lending capacity. However, key indicators like new housing starts, completions, and sales paint a picture of a deeply troubled sector. Price controls officially mask the true extent of the decline, with many economists suspecting significant real-world depreciation. China's real estate crisis presents an impossible challenge. Balancing the need for growth with curbing debt and preventing market excesses is a delicate act. Finding the right balance will be crucial for navigating this economic crossroads and ensuring a healthy and sustainable future for China's real estate sector. As such, the last and most important question you might have is, what happens now? I mean, yeah, Evergrande is collapsing now before our own very eyes, but many are still doubtful. Due to the massive recognizing the ruling would allow creditors to seize unpledged onshore Chinese assets, a process that could take a number of years to complete, according to lawyers. The bulk of these onshore assets are land and property developments that have been pledged as collateral to onshore creditors, including banks and business partners, potentially creating a conflict between them and offshore creditors. Jonathan Leach, a Hogan Lovells partner in Hong Kong, stated that the PRC courts can refuse to recognize or assist Hong Kong liquidators in a number of ways under the cross-border protocol. This includes if mainland creditors may be unfairly treated or if recognition would violate basic principles of PRC law or if it would offend public order or good morals. China created a pilot scheme in 2021 in which courts in Shanghai, Xiamen and Shenzhen can recognize Hong Kong-ordered insolvency proceedings. However, as Evergrande is based in Guangzhou and many of its $240 billion of assets are spread across China, the liquidator will need to go to court in every city where Evergrande's subsidiaries are based to try to take control. Hong Kong courts have issued many liquidation orders on Chinese companies in the past, and the cross-border procedure has been a challenge for many. With that, let me know what you guys think. I have been updating you guys on this topic since 2021 and it feels strange seeing how it all unfolded into this. I will continue updating you guys on the most important developments from Evergrande as the situation develops. Thank you so much for watching the video, make sure to join our discord and as always, I hope to see you guys on the next one.